Hello. I hear you. Hi. How are you doing? Here. <laughs> oh, I like to laugh. So I got your request for um, some the article that I wrote with Khalid. Yes, uh huh. It was one of the ones you cited in your article. Yes, exactly. So, so, um, so I'm not sure how the I'm not sure how these things work because it's a I have the book I have the physical book, and um, oh, no, that's okay. Go. Oh, oh, oh okay. You, well, it, it, well, I have I have the book, mm -hmm. and um, it's a chapter of a book All rather right. than an article. Uh -huh. So um, I don't on my computer I don't have mm -hmm. I don't have it. I have okay. what we submitted. So uh -huh. what do I, I mean, what's the best thing to do? Should I, um, I can, I can uh, make a, a Xerox of the chapter from the book, but I don't have like the book. I mean, I don't have it on the yeah. computer. Well, it just said request articles, so I don't, don't want to inconvenience you. What, what did I need it for? Uh, because I, well, I can, oh, because I can it's get Betty you, and Marshall. Okay. And you, and you use the, uh, the, uh, there's shack, a four shack shack that's it yeah yeah share right help ask, say? ask comment ask, yeah comment share yeah share help ask yeah. comment so I thought it would be nice right. uh, because uh, actually you know as you know I've been away for a, a week diving yeah you look rested you look it's kind you know, of like you've been yeah. unwinding <laughs> yeah I mean well you know we, we, at least we're back and we uh, we got a little bit of sleep, so uh, Graham is here. That's great. Thomas Leverett has just arrived. Okay, so anyway, um, I what what I what I wanted to do this thing I'm doing on Sunday, uh, not Sunday today is Sunday on the Graham is there without his mask. Um, there he is. Hey Graham, how are you? Hi Don, hi Lane. I'm well. How are you? How was your week? My week, lovely. Going diving, flirting with COVID. Everyone in Malaysia is just, you know, Malaysia bole, they say, which means malish. Everything was everything open. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. People, people are pretty much going without masks and. Um, <laughs> but you know we're down to in, in Malaysia we're down to just a few cases a day it's starting to climb again it's over a dozen now I think yesterday but it's hard to know whether they're flagging them at the airport and they're testing them or they're or they're in quarantine they've developed COVID or they're in uh, uh, detention centers or something like that so uh, but Malaysia seems pretty safe at the moment but you know surely the virus is still there. It's, it's impacting half a dozen people a day. And uh, so, you know, you just want to avoid it. But on the other hand, you know, we, we wanted to get it because they, they allow us to travel between states. And they, of course, everybody now is going to travel between states, taking that opportunity. And, uh, but since the country itself is very low COVID, um, as long as they don't let foreigners in, Especially Americans, you don't want those. Um, <laughs> well, it, anyway, as long as uh, until when when they start allowing international travel and tourism, because they need to do that for their economy, uh, then uh, you know, that's when we go back into hiding. For right now, we've taken a calculated risk. We've looked at the data. We've followed the medicine. Uh, we have ignored Trump. And we're, you know, going out and having a little fun, like a lot of people were doing this last week. So, yeah, I I get the impression that's what, in, ultimately, we all have to learn to live with this, and we can't just shut ourselves away. So, so long as we take precautions, and people are are sensible, then then it'll minimize the risk. Yeah, there's Tom. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Hey, Tom. That's you. you Got to unmute though. Tom. 
Thomas and Denison from many TESOL conferences. Ah, there you go. Ready. Go for it, Tom. Good. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, things get slow to hook up, you know, those satellite balances that take a little bit of time before they find the route, right route to travel. Yeah. Glad to see you. You've been on the bus, but for a staycation, huh? Staycation. Well, in Malaysia, yeah, in, in country. Oh. So oh, you in stayed Malaysia. in Malaysia. Yeah. But you still went across Malaysia. Yeah, I went across Malaysia. Uh, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm in southern New Mexico. Ah, okay. Ooh. The sun is coming up and I missed the comet. So Oh, okay. I, I slept right through the comet. So Which comet was that? I don't know. There's uh some some comet out there these days. And uh so when there is, I try to get out to see it. Hmm. I have wow. a neighbor. I have a neighbor who was the first person to see the Hale Bop comet. He's Mr. Uh -huh. Hale. Ah, wow. Uh -huh. Okay. So I saw that the Hale Bop was comet was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, anyway. I try and see the comet just for him, pretty much, you know, so. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, he, um, he's kind of sorry about what happened in California, but, but, but he was the one who saw it, and it was seen from the house that is the nearest house to my house, you know, the house next door, kind of, so, so anyway. That's our claim to fame came out here is that the hail bar so oh, we're doing okay in new mexico how is everybody doing i don't know lane how are I'm you doing in, well i'm in new york hmm. uh we have our ups and downs i'm pretty much staying you know just by myself you know i'm with my husband the two of us just in the house we walk around the neighborhood we're we're very low risk takers we we don't want to do anything <laughs> We're sort of waiting, but yeah. we have plenty to do. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I, 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 like I don't know what nice I would corner. do if I had to do a normal life because I'm too busy. <laughs> okay, Maha has joined us. Hi, Maha. Hi, 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 friends. How are you all? Uh, how are you? Yeah, they had a nice uh, trip uh, around. And I'm in old Mexico, Tom. So hello from old Mexico to you in new Mexico. Yeah. The original owners of New Mexico. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Ben? We can, Maha, we can hear you fine. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your trip. Thank you. Yes, we did. Uh -huh. It's a lovely trip. So uh Lane and I were talking about um, uh, uh, what was it? it? Begins with an S, ends in a C, and it's uh, ask and what? What is it? Uh, Teti and Marshall. Yes, I'm. I'm. S A R K. S A R K. I'm preparing a a, uh, a PDF for you. Oh, okay. All right. But what's the acronym? Oh, SHAC. SHAC, S-H-A-C. S-H-A-C. Uh -huh. He came up with this and, and uh, I've been including it in my online trainings and people love it. I, to me, it, it's, so, it's just pretty simple, but the idea that people have a way to think about peer feedback. So instead of just saying, give your peer feedback, Mm -hmm. or to yeah. tell them, uh, give them feedback on the mechanics or give them feedback on the content. You know, this way it gives them ways to, to give feedback. Yeah, so let's, let's show, it, tell, ask, 
and share, share, share. share. Oh, share. So the idea, the idea of share, share is, you, let's say you listen to your, you're, you're in a group and you're listening to somebody else in the group, then you're listening to them and it reminds you of something and you could say, oh, well, that's like my experience and then it so share that's the first one mm -hmm. and then the idea of help is that you know the more typical idea that when you're giving peer feedback you might help the person in some way but the emphasis is on help rather than critique mm -hmm. you know it's more yeah. help okay. and then ask is if obviously if you have a question oh could you tell me more about this or and then mm -hmm. comment he has at the end because um, yeah. you might you might just have a general comment like I really learned a lot from what you said or something like that. You know? So, and yeah. people like that structure because it's not too limiting, but it's not too broad. Yeah, I I just muted Maha because there's a little sound coming from your microphone. But if you want to say something, just unmute yourself. You're quite welcome. Um, so, well, the reason this came up, you know, some time ago, I think Graham offered to do a session where he was going to, as your, your first session with the, in the Webhead series, you were going to use the SOFLA um, approach. I, I don't remember exactly what was the topic of that. What? Session. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was, mm -hmm. My plan is I'm doing a workshop for I the... Yeah, I'm doing a workshop for IATEFL LTC mm -hmm. on the 24th of July. Ah, mm -hmm. And what I want to do is adopt the SOFLA approach for that workshop. Mm -hmm. Wow, oh, I'm getting excited. Yeah. Getting... Well, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen any of the materials I put around, but that's exactly. But you were going to do that earlier, Graham, for another. Uh, well, one of your other sessions that you did. I think that was the one where you showed us Miro. You were going to see if you could apply the SOFLA approach to that. And it, um, if you say so, Vance, I don't remember that, but I definitely have a plan for this workshop that I'm doing on the 24th. Okay, well, well we both, we can feed off each other because I'm doing one on the 16th, that's in a few days. And uh, I, I also plan to use Lane's uh, SOFLA to sort of, as a framework for showing people how to, or, or modeling for people how to teach online. Now, the really interesting thing, Graham, you won't be aware of this, but Lane and Ilka Kostka have uh, just produced an article for uh, TEFL, for TESL EJ. The teaching I am aware of it. You are. Um, in fact, okay. I've been patiently waiting for it to appear because I interviewed Lane for the IHFL LTC newsletter, which I don't know when it's going to come out because we're still putting it together. But I talked um, my I talked his ear off. That's the problem. I talk too much. No, <laughs> well, no, you so don't, Lane. You, you you talk uh, turkey. There. You you really uh, you you <laughs> give us some straight dope there. And uh, uh, the SOFLA approach is obviously interesting, and and I became quite intimately involved in it through. Uh, editing this article that Lane and Ilka produced for the issue that's coming up. It, we're just waiting for, um, for Aaron to put it online, and then we can all see it, although it wouldn't be in its final format, but there's a little bit of tweaking to do. But uh, once you get that URL, Lane, you can see the, where you, you'll have the link where it's going to be published. Okay. So it would be nice to show people, even if it's a work in progress, but in any event, um, so what I've done, uh, maybe I could share a screen and show people, but for this, this workshop that I've got coming up, I have, uh, as you know, I was on a bus last night. Okay. Then before that I was in islands without electricity and internet is a big mess for the last week. But in any event, uh, when I got home today, I really went over this article and I teased out those eight, uh, uh, steps, okay, and put what you, Lane, said in, in your article with, about each one, and what I'd like to do, what I, what I want to show the people in my workshop is uh, how the, the, is to show them tools, but put them in the framework of SOFLA, which makes 
a lot of sense to me. It's a very good framework for uh, developing that. And what I wanted to, to do tonight, perhaps maybe start a Jamboard or something like that, and see and just play around with some of the tools that would uh, lend themselves to SOFA. Obviously, we haven't had a pre-work uh, session, and we're not having it. We're checking in now, I suppose. But uh, anyhow, let me pull that stuff up, and I'll show you where uh, what I've done here. So I'm going to share a screen, and come over here. Where would I be? Mm. Must be this one. Okay. Share that one. Can you see a screen? Uh, this is the did one. Did you share your whole desktop? And oh, did I share just a screen? So what? Yeah. Why? Now we have it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now we have it. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that that tiny URL at the bottom of that. This is, by the way, it's learningtogether.pbworks.com. So if you go to learningtogether.pbworks.com. I don't know if you can see this in the screen share, but that's where things are posted uh, when they're coming into the learning together events as this one is. So that flip, flipped was from a slideshow I produced for a plenary I gave on flipped learning. And uh, that was before I was much attuned to SOFLA. So I revised myself since then. But anyway, basically, let's see what I'm, what I, oh, uh, this is this is learning together, but there's a link to the workshop that I'm developing. Let me just make this a bit bigger so you can see it. Okay, so there's a workshop. It's it's called online learning and teaching. They asked me to do a workshop on online learning and teaching, and this is addressed to PhD students who are getting lots of workshops, a whole series of workshops. I guess because they're not going into classrooms, they're getting experts coming to talk to them about things like preparing dissertations and getting published and things like that. And so I had the opportunity to be to negotiate teaching on online learning and teaching. And so this is the, the, the acronym OLLT 2020 is what I set up for that. And this is only a, a workspace. I haven't really uh, put it all together, but let's see. Maybe Excuse I can get... me, Vance, mm -hmm. can I ask a question? Yeah, are, totally. are these doctoral students in all fields or are they all going to be English teachers? Yeah, English teachers. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, let me go back to Zoom and put this link in the text chat so you can see it. Okay, so what should you stop to share? Okay, stop sharing so I can get back to my chat. I haven't opened up the chat yet. There we go. So there's the chat. And this is the link that I'm at right now. So what, what this is, is when I got back this morning and I had a nap and I got up around noon and had some breakfast and started really putting my mind to this. Uh, I'd already started it before, but today I really kind of went into the SOFLA uh, framework, which Lane set forth in her article. And um, this is where I'm putting the materials that I'm thinking to do with the students. So I'd really appreciate your feedback on it. Uh, let me share my screen again. Same screen. Okay, so we're back at that OLLT 2020.pbworks.com. And can you see my screen okay? Yeah. Table of yes, contents there? Should. Okay. So basically, uh, if I click on SOFLA, this is uh, using things that I could reference. You referenced yourself, uh, Marshall and uh, Costca 2020, okay. which is actually turns out to be a uh, a slide presentation, and I had to look at that. And it does go through the eight steps very nicely, and the eight steps are I just took them mostly from your article. I mean, I took out from your article so I could understand them because there are eight steps. Uh, if I go to your article, maybe I can even show you that because uh, that actually gives eight steps in a, a kind of a uh, if I can page through here and find that's the figure, the one that was a table and we made it a figure. 
Right. I, the is figure it? is new. That's good. The figure itself is only going to be showing in your, in the new article. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I in that particular video, you went through the eight steps. You described them, which was very useful. Right. So it's something I could ask people to have a look at. But these are the eight steps. There's pre-work, sign-in activity, whole group application, breakouts, share out, preview and discovery, assignment, instruction, and reflection. I don't know, Lane, you might like to say something about it. I'll revert over to this, uh, to this well, presentation. This is, an, this is an opportunity for you, though, to have us preview and work with you on your... Sure. You know, isn't that the focus now? Well, yes. Uh, keeping in mind that this is something I kind of went through the article today, in, this afternoon. Yeah. And I pulled things out. Let's see, there's pre-work. Uh, I, I found the tools. There weren't any tools for pre-work, really. But pre-work is what you've modeled in some of your recent presentations. Uh, you well, might put up a... I, I can a tell you the tools, I, the tools I use for pre-work mm -hmm. are PlayPosit and Perusal. Okay, I can uh, that somewhere. Why don't I see that in the in the article? Okay. Yeah, play pause it and perusal. Mm -hmm. I'll just go into the yeah. uh, into edit here and I'll put that in. Lane, why yeah. why in particular? I probably asked you ju during the interview, but why in particular those two tools? What what is it about them that you think lends it lend, well, lend well um, to? Well, I haven't found anything that's better than play pause it for embedding interactions uh you know you can find uh you can find a lot of applications where you can put in interactions that stop the video lesson but play posit seems the most robust uh, it allows for audio video embedding audio embedding video you can uh you can talk to your students in between um you can have them do discussions, and then they have about 10 options for questions. Everything from matching to um, reflecting to multiple choice. It just seems like the most versatile, but I'm wide open if anybody comes up with something more. Uh, I think when you mm -hmm. flipped your uh, webinars with us, like the one you did for Talon, uh, one of the first Talon sessions, you used Google, uh, forms to give us a form. Oh, yeah. Well, that's okay. But okay. Yes. So there are two, two different things. One is professional development and one is uh, courses. Okay. So if, if, um, if somebody is just doing something like a workshop for a conference or something like that, you might just do a Google form. But if you're teaching an actual course to your students, mm -hmm then you have to deliver material to them. So that's where the play posit is really a, a, a lesson, a video lesson. Mm -hmm. There are two different kinds of pre-work. Yeah, and also you, you made a video for us, as I remember. Yeah, Just a video, I mean, uh, even, in the Google, even in the Google form, you can, you can have a, uh, a, a short video Mm -hmm. you know, just to introduce things. Mm -hmm. But but for my actual students, that's not mm -hmm. sufficient. I need to, you know, I teach grammar. I, yeah. I got to teach them grammar. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so I can't use a Google form. And the other thing I use is Perusal, which I just discovered a few months ago. And uh -huh. um, I, just, I just taught a course with it and a PD with it. And people really like it because okay. they can read one copy of something together. Uh -huh. They're all reading the same copy. Yeah. Okay, no. um, I can show it to you later if you want. Okay. So uh, for, I guess, Graham's purposes and mine, I suppose, we're addressing professionals. Is that correct, Graham? Yes, definitely. Okay. I'm going to set it up so the people attending the workshop on the 24th do the pre-work, etc., and I'm hoping to to follow so that we follow the steps that you've put mm -hmm. forward. So, are you using a Google Form for that? What are you using for the pre-work? I haven't decided yet, so I'm going oh. to look today at. I need to get it together today, basically. So, 
Wow. I needed to get mine together yesterday, but I'll get it together tomorrow. <laughs> so this is very, very appropriate. Um, so I'm going to put it together today. We're, we're going to be announcing it next week. Yeah. So people yeah. have time to actually do the, the stuff before the workshop. I thought, and I need to get, I need I thought, to get mm -hmm. some clips of the videoed play tests that I've done for the interactive stories. Yeah, and she also, I, I remember Lane also had readings, so she had us read something, and she showed us a video, and then we fill out a form. So that was a, a good uh, pre-work, get, get you focused on what's coming up, and get you oriented into what you're going to see. So whatever you do to get your students into that. Uh, in, yeah. in your case, perusal, uh, perusal has two L's. Perusal has it's two all L's. like every, it's like the word all. So okay. peruse all. Peruse all. <laughs> okay. All right. Peruse okay, all. cool. All right. Uh, then the, the next is sign in. And that's when your students arrive in your course, you get them to do something that shows that they're there. Especially if you're if you're teaching a bunch of students who need to be there, you need to get them to show that they're there in a, possibly a different way than if you show up with a bunch of professionals in a webinar and it's a little bit going to be a little unwieldy. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to see them again. But certainly, it. Uh, I think you mentioned uh, uh, something like Flipgrid. I don't know. That might be a little complicated for them, but at least uh, something that you know they can. Even a poll or something like that says here, we, you know, here we are. Let's let's connect. Is is that what you think that would fit the sign-in criteria? Um, well, I usually just let them use if it's a webinar. I just ask them to put something in the chat. So, mm -hmm. for example, I might say um, share one idea from the pre-work in okay. the chat that you, what's your one takeaway from the pre-work um, and just put it in the chat because mm. we're not looking for accountability so much, mm, just right. that, you know, and then you see what they put and what they put, you can use then to launch your first little discussion or whatever, mm. you know, you get an idea of who's, who's, who's on board with what information. Okay. Another way is to just ask them, you know, to introduce themselves, where they're from, and that sort of thing. But uh, then you're not capital, you're not capitalizing on the pre-work when you do that. Yeah, I, I, I think they told me 50 people will be appearing in mine. That would work in a session like this, and I often use that technique to to get uh, get people to open up and just talk to one another before we get started. Yeah. But yeah, but uh, anyhow, yeah. So you have to find something appropriate to the, your group size. And then the next thing is whole group application, which let's see, as you said in your article, solidifies students' learning, clarifies what they may have missed in the pre-work, or applies what they have learned from the asynchronous work. So do you want to elaborate on that? And you, you said uh, as, a, as an idea, you could, you could have students create a chart uh, or, and categorize things as we've been, we were doing with Miro, for example. We, we set up you know, get people to do things, uh, make sticky notes, you know, put the right. put your ideas here and there, and categorize things. Where, where would the sticky note go? Any other ideas? Are, are you asking everybody, right? You're... Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, this whole group application means that th at this stage, you're engaging the students with a concept, and you want them to show that they understand. So you're trying to, you're sort of like yeah. you would in class, you know, you're, if you're with them in a room, you would sit, tell them something, and you would get them to feed back to you so you, you knew they grasped the concept. Yeah, if you think of Bloom's taxonomy, you know, when I say application, I mean it in that sense. You know, they're supposed to be applying what they what they learned in the yes. pre-work. Moving up the Bloom's taxonomy, moving exactly from exactly. what you told them and they're receiving and then kind of get up there and right. do something with it. Okay, I like that. Okay, uh, I've just noticed lots of misspellings here when I make this larger. Oh no, it's okay. What's the next one? 
breakouts. The, the important the important thing with the whole group piece is that they're doing it, that you're stepping back. Mm -hmm. they're, they're negotiating, they're managing it, they're handling it themselves. Mm -hmm. And this one you have in parentheses, which I suppose could mean is optional. I might find that a little bit difficult to do in a webinar. It's in parentheses? Why is it in parentheses? I don't know. Why is it, did I, I think did you did that. <laughs> oh, no. I'll just get rid of that. You never saw it. It's not there anymore. It's gone. <laughs> no, that's the that's everyone's favorite part is when uh -huh. they get to go off in small groups. <laughs> oh, what would, would, would you do that with 50 people in... Uh, Sure, I've done it with more than 50. But you, you, um, uh -huh. you need a co-pilot when you do uh -huh. that. Okay. You can't, you can't do it by yourself. Uh -huh. Well, here's what I learned from, uh, I was gonna say Nellie, but why do I think of um, Nellie when I'm trying to think of Haida? Okay. Haika, 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 Haika. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It's um, early for you. I learned, yeah. I learned from Heike this wonderful technique for uh -huh. breakouts with large numbers. Okay. Um, and this technique is, it's pretty simple actually. You just have them rename themselves and in ah, front of their, yes. in front of their name, uh -huh. she, cause she had me do, she, she, she and I did this together actually at a, a workshop we did together. Um, and we had uh, we told we made a list for them of uh, different lessons they were going to analyze in this case, and then uh -huh. that and they, they they picked the number of the lesson they were interested in discussing yes. uh -huh. and put it put the number. So I would put like one, Lane mm -hmm. Marshall, and you put the number first, and then you, the per, the copilot sort sorts everybody by number, and then mm -hmm. it's easy to put them in rooms. Yes. So, yeah, and so you can so, have 10 rooms, you can have 10 rooms of four people or uh -huh. whatever you want. So, you, but I think she said you give them a topic or you give them a selection of topics. Well, a reason. Or, you, give, yeah. you give them a reason. Uh -huh. You give them a reason to, a you reason. know, what up for choosing that room. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It could be a topic or it could be. Exactly. Uh, discuss yeah. this aspect or we're going to go yeah, and talk or, about these things. We're going to bring it all together at the end and we're going to each talk about it what we've decided and put it all together into one big um, yeah. yeah one big piece or you can group them any way you want you can have them number themselves by anything by mm -hmm. um you know where they're located or it doesn't have to be i mean it, mm -hmm. it's just the it's a it's a way to to manage large numbers yeah. and get them into breakouts easily yeah so what she's talking about they rename themselves in zoom one something two something three something yeah. and all and the co-pilot uh puts manually moves them into room number one room number two room number three yeah something. exactly uh -huh. okay or you can do you can do random too you know uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. yeah it might be easier <laughs> okay uh well okay so anyway uh have to think about what you'd be doing in the middle of a webinar with those people. Uh, but anyway, that's worth some thought. I, I appreciate that. What, what do you think, Graham? What would you do with your students, would you, would you, with your professionals? Will you put them in breakout rooms? Um, I'm not sure if, because it's different because, um, well, is it different? I think I haven't got clear what I want to do. What I want to do is give, yeah, this is what I need to do today, basically. I need to, um, what I want to do is get, get the teachers familiarized with a number of different ways of doing inter interactive storyline through video clips, I think, and through some reading. Mm -hmm. um, so they come to the workshop with a, with a basic understanding because what I like about software for this is that normally when you, when you do a workshop on a subject such as this, your whole workshop is introducing the whole concept mm -hmm. to the teachers who are coming. Mm -hmm. What I'd rather they do is they come to the workshop after knowing the concept and having thought about it. So we, the idea is, that should lead to a more informed and interesting discussion about what they 
how they might take this and adapt it to their um, mm -hmm. education context. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to achieve by using mm -hmm. this. Okay. I haven't quite sure, not quite sure how to approach it yet mm -hmm. from a from a you know tools point of view or uh, what I would do during the workshop because mm -hmm. I still need to work on what I want them to have before they come to the workshop and then I will know. I'm still thinking about doing the first part as a like we did last week as an interactive story game so that they can get some of them can get a live experience of what it's like because I think mm. that's also important that mm. they um, or observe a live experience in progress mm. and then but make that short and then make maybe 40 minutes for questions, reflections, discussions, perhaps. Mm. That, how they do that and in what way, I don't know yet. Yeah, I like your process. It's very similar to mine. You don't really have any idea what you're doing when you start out. You develop it as you go along. <laughs> anyway, yeah, okay. Yeah. But, but Lane is really very helpful for helping put this in kind of a, a framework which seems to resonate with both of us, I suppose. So uh, after they return from the breakout rooms, then they'll go to share out. So they'll present what they learned about in their groups. And, uh, and, you're, and she suggests including a peer feedback element. Do you want to elaborate on that? Maybe Lane, that's for you. Uh, well, if the issue um, there again, it's different for professional development and for being a classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. But if it's professional development, you're not looking so much for accountability. Oh, okay. So it doesn't really matter who shares mm -hmm. out. Okay. So what mm -hmm. you want yeah. is to get a discussion going. Yes. So you very often, if you if you peek into the breakout rooms, you pick you pick a breakout, you pick one or two breakout rooms that seem to have done a great job of really whatever mm -hmm. it is that you ask mm -hmm. them to do. Mm -hmm. And you kind of give yourself, you know, uh, put, put your own, you know, bias it in your favor, in other words. So mm -hmm. you pick a group that you know is going to share out in a robust way. Um, and so you say, oh, let's hear from group eight, you know, <laughs> like that, because you know that they're ready to share. That's that's mm -hmm. the danger in, in just saying, okay, who wants to share? You know, you, you don't know what you're gonna get. Yeah. So, um, and sometimes you can even give them a heads up, by the way, I'm gonna ask you to share when you come back or something like that. And, um, and then they share and then you can have a good discussion with the whole group um, about whatever the group share. You can have, depending on how much time you have, you can have any number of groups share. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is where uh, we were talking about share, help, ask, and comment. Fenty and Marshall. And there's a references section down here somewhere. Uh, yeah. Anyway, you can find it. So that, that, that's in the references section. She uh, referred to it in the article that she wrote for the Tesla EJ. And I asked, I, I found, I, I Googled it and I found it on ResearchGate, but it said uh, request, uh, what do you call it? Full text, request so, full text. Yeah. So I did that, and then that's where we started our conversation. She's produced one, so if you wanted a full text, I don't know, you have to click on ask, request full text, and I know she's got one ready. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other comments there? We're up to step six now. Vance, um, just to say, Lane is actually speaking. Um, in a Q&A session next Tuesday mm -hmm. um, on the Flip Classroom, mm -hmm. which I invited her to do for the British Council. Ah. I'll put the link in the chat in case anyone's interested. Please do, and any it links, if, if we're invited to your session on the 24th, I don't know, it could be a oh, workshop. Yeah? Yeah. It's, open, it's open to anyone. Okay. Um, please, do, please put those links in the chat and I'll put them in the Learning Together calendar. Sure, yeah. I don't think there's a link yet that's mm -hmm. what why I have to finish this today. But when mm -hmm. there is, I'll send you it. Okay. Oh, yeah. I should. Ex hey, I. As long as we're announcing events, I should mm -hmm. tell you that the flip tech conference today through the sixteenth. Um, it starts at noon. Oh, not noon. I'm sorry. <laughs> it starts 
I, I don't have the UTC for, for it. Um, Eastern daylight is noon, but mm -hmm. anyway, um, it's, it's running. I can give you the link to the program if you want. It's all about flipped learning for four days. Mm -hmm. And everybody has their presentations up and available for people to do, to look at. And then there's going to be a live Q and A but it's a completely flipped conference. So you first watch the presentations you're interested in. And then every speaker is showing up for a scheduled live Q and A and discussion of their presentation that you previously watched. So that's the way the conference is running. Sure. Yeah. Would you like me to share? I know you're both, you're all, pretty busy probably but um I, i'll give you the link to what it. what date is this today it starts today oh it starts today mm, might, yeah. might be yeah anyway but anyway please yeah. put it in there anyone i'll put it in the learning together calendar and i'll okay, run great. time and date on it and see it sure it's nothing to do with english learners i just so uh, you know i'm mm -hmm. probably the only person involved in english uh -huh. although carolina carolina will be in there oh also. We, we probably um, but most people are not uh, in our field. They're in all, you know, math, science, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I will put the link in the chat when I find it. Elaine, Carolina will be joining you on Tuesday. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> we always bump into each other. We're, you know, we've written an article together. You know, we, we yeah, wrote a, a SOFLA article together. Yeah, that's why I contacted her. I thought it would be good for you to, to be able to speak together and answer oh, questions. Okay, cool. Yeah, and cool. the links Thank to all those articles will be in the publication that comes out in Tesla EJ, which is will be out at the end of the month, but yeah. maybe in a few days we'll be, we'll have a URL for it. And just just Lane, just another thing. Any that Google Doc that they've shared with you, if you put any links you would like them to share during the Q and A, yeah, they'll do they'll do that. So if there's anything you particularly want them to share, Vance, I don't know if that um, on the internet article will be ready by Tuesday, the link. I don't know. You know I really expected it to be ready by now. And when I go and visit the article online, I see Aaron's picture there. I think he's left, left it on and forgotten about it. But no, actually, he's very good about that. But it's it's really not. I mean, we got to the end of the month, so he, he's probably very busy. He has, they're they're yeah. doing this uh, online offline thing and there's this swamp there in, uh, in Japan. Okay, so let me go back to, we're on step number six out of uh, eight. So go back to, uh, so the, after they've come back from their breakout rooms, for the sh the share out, sorry, they've been in breakout, they've, they've come out for share out and then review and discovery, preview and discovery. Preview means that they're getting ready for the next session priming students for their upcoming assigned work, as she put it in her article, she and uh, Ilka. And the suggested procedures where teachers can pre-teach terms and concepts, activate students' prior knowledge, build new schemata. Anything to add there, Lane? Well, just that this is the most important step in the whole synchronous piece. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, you could argue that the pre-work is the most important step, period, but, but this is the second most important step of the whole model mm -hmm. um, because the biggest problem people raise with flipped learning is if they, exa exactly what Graham was saying, if they don't learn the concept before they come into you, if they haven't been introduced to it, then you can't apply it. You can't do anything. You, you can't, you're going to be forced to reteach it. Mm -hmm. So the, this step is the step that ensures that they're excited, that they're motivated, that they're prepared, that, you, that you've got them ready to go to look at the next uh -huh. pre-work. So it's really important. With the workshop, what I'm expecting, Lane, I don't know, Vance, you might want to think about this. Oh, that's is, right, because um, it's a one-shot. Mm. Yeah. What, what I, there's sort of two reasons for doing this. One is to promote... SOFLA amongst teachers who might be doing their own work, mm -hmm. but also to so uh, but also to have them have a better understanding of online interactive games and how to approach them and stuff. 
And what I'm looking at doing is that the people who don't do the pre-work, who don't follow what, what we're suggesting, won't be lost. But those who do will have a much richer and better understanding of of both how to approach this type of uh, you know online learning, um, but also have a much better understanding of how this relates to their own context. That's the challenge, anyway. Yeah, and the way I look at it, you know, a lot of people in this kind of environment, since you don't see them before, they. I mean, you put up what you can beforehand and hope the organizers will distribute it to the students. Because when I went to Thailand, I, I set it up on this flip model as well. But every workshop I went to, have you seen the materials? The, the organizers didn't give them the materials. You know, so they didn't show them the links where I developed all this. So they all came in cold. And then, uh, you know, I put as many artifacts online and uh, as I could and a record of everything we'd done. And uh, then they can go and piece it together if they want, you know, and, and, uh, and there's, uh, and I even did an e-learning part of it, and there were lots of webinars for that, so and they're all recorded. But anyway, it all comes in a package, but it's, it's nice if people can get, can do the first steps, the pre-learn, the pre-work, but if they don't, then as you say, Graham, you've got, you, you get them as they are, and uh, you try to make it so that they can at least pick up something on the back end. Well, I, I could tell you what what I have been doing in my um, in my PD when they're not when it's the last session and I'm not going to see them again for step six. Mm -hmm. I preview uh, a kind of a follow up reading or presentation that wraps together everything we've done together. Uh -huh. So it kind of ties everything together. Uh -huh. because I'm not going to see them again. And what I preview is that. That's what I preview. A follow-up reading of some kind. So yeah, that, something that yeah. kind of gels or solidifies mm -hmm. what we did in the workshop. Of course, if you're recording it, uh, you at least they have that. They can go back and look at the recording. Yeah. But anyway, okay, yeah. So try to think of something in advance that they can go and that that they'll do after the workshop uh -huh. to, a, you know, to take it the, to the next step. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And then seven out of eight is assignment introduction. So this is where I suppose we assume we're going to see them again, and we explain what uh, they should do for the next out of class work. Remind them where to find the resources. And the tools for that would be your online platform. Yeah. Where they, if that's on yeah. I, I should say that I have another version of this for professional development. Hmm. And in the professional development version, I don't call it assignment instructions. Uh -huh. I what call it follow up. Follow up. Okay. Let me just because it's for professional development and I have a whole different presentation I do just for professional development. Okay. This was more, this whole article was assuming you're a teacher in an ESL mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. well, for we're EFL. Adapting. We're, we're taking your, yeah. your framework yeah. and we're adapting it to, uh, exactly. you know, obviously we can't do it, we can't follow it exactly, but it is nice to know. It's nice to have this conversation to see what, yeah, what yeah there are differences. Can. There, there are a lot of differences. Um, it, you still can go through the steps, but you do it differently for PD. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last one is reflection. So write it over, have them write a short statement on the whiteboard, reflecting on what resonated with them in one or two sentences. And, uh, and, and that would be something that they could complete online. Uh, that, you know, like well, here's the difference is that I like them to see what the other people, I like to see, I like them to see what the other people put. Mm -hmm. And if they do it individually online, you see everything, but they don't. Mm -hmm. Unless you share the document with them and not mm -hmm. too many of them are going to look at it if you yeah. do that. Even I but don't do they're all writing until afterwards, but anyway. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. if, if you, if you do it in, in real time, they're more likely to do it. Mm -hmm. Again, this is PD, mm -hmm. you know, so I would have them do it right then and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, put something up, get, get their reflections. And uh, uh, well, the, of course, they're, they're going to go up online. 
that if you put it up online, they can they'll have the opportunity to go back and have a look later if they yeah take that yeah. Trouble. But I I would do it right right there, not send them to something, but do it right yeah, there. We'll put up something that because it's fresh in their mind and they mm -hmm. just took a workshop with you, mm -hmm. so that they're not going to be unless they do the follow up. And again, the follow up is going to be optional for them mm -hmm. because it's professional development. But the reflection they should do right away, because that gives you feedback that you need. Okay. Well, as far as my uh, my stage of what I'm thinking of, I was. Yeah. I've just been. I've got a sort of a pattern here. I've been picking out some tools like Flipgrid, for example, finding tutorials for them. Uh, then I think of something that we can do in the session that will use Flipgrid and see where to put it, maybe like pre-work, for example, we have them all try to contribute to a flip grid. What, what, what's the topic? Of, what, what is your top, do you have a topic or is Would your you topic sim just online? Just Online learning and teaching. That's what they ask. And it's that do. general. So you yes. can do anything you want, right? Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. You can get them all in a second life. <laughs> but it's, it has to be practical for them, you know, so because, and, and, I, and judging from the other, okay. The other things, the other uh, presentations they've had in the workshop, they've probably had about 20 of them. They're all on oh. very standard, uh, sounds like top down. I haven't really looked at the presentations. Okay. But. All right. Well, uh, do you, I, have, I have an idea if you're interested. Sure. I, Am I interested? <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I, I just, I did a very successful flip grid with my, my PD uh -huh. and I could share it. So I told them all, um, to share a cultural artifact, uh -huh. and they, I gave them instructions to uh, to do their Flipgrid on that. And what they needed to do was show us the artifact, mm -hmm. maybe hold it still so we could really see it, and turn it to different angles so we can see it, and tell us what it is, why you chose it, and uh, its significance. You know what's significant about it, and um, and, it, and just do that in their Flipgrid. And then um, I, uh, and so I have 27 of them did it out of about mm -hmm. 30 some. And, mm -hmm. um, and so we have all their little videos. And then I took, then what that was for the, um, what they had to do on individually. But then mm -hmm. what I did, which was labor intensive, um, was do, because I was so excited about Miro. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I took a Miro board. Mm -hmm. I can show it to you. Um, I, I took a Miro board and I put up all a snapshot that I got. I did a, a, a screenshot snapshot of each person's artifact. And I put that up there with the name of the artifact. And I made a Miro board. And then uh, when we did the whole group application, I, I asked them, how could you turn this into a lesson with your students? What would they learn? And they all jumped in and said, oh, vocabulary, um, ah. what's priorities of different cultures, um, how, how, do you, how to do adjectives, uh, learning a lot of adjectives or, you know, all kinds of things. And they came up with uh, all kinds of ideas for lessons. Okay. I don't know. It was just cool. fun. It was, it was a cool way to, um, to do a, a PD, you know. By the way, yeah. Elaine, I don't know yeah. if you saw it, um, but last week we were, Vance and I were introduced to a way of using Miro that gets around the fact that you can only have three boards if you're if a free. No, I have unlimited boards. I have an educator account. Okay. All right. That, Is that, that what you mean? Be... Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you mean educator account? What if you don't have an educator account? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, Graham suggested I use Jamboard. So I've been looking into that. That's actually uh, Okay. So Jamboard seems a little similar and also because it's a Google tool. It looks like yeah. it's a lot more flexible. Okay. So, anyway, sure. yeah. Same idea. You could do the but same. But anyway, that was yeah. just an example of what mm -hmm. you could get them to do. Yeah. They might enjoy it. You could do exactly what you said on a Jamboard, too. Yeah. So, yeah, Lightboard. I don't know. Uh, Dilip uh, Barad was showing Lightboards 
uh, and something he's done recently. Are you familiar with light boards? It's, yeah, it's a piece of glass. Yeah, John, John Bergman uses, was, uh, introduced that with uh, Flip. He uses it all the time. Yeah, and I noticed I, when I looked into it, this is from 2014. They were developed and that sort of thing. So well, anyway, it's something I'm just coming on to myself. I, I thought the uh, people might appreciate knowing about them when you're telling them about how learning and teaching you have to online. You have to set it up. You have to oh. set it up. Oh, but, but uh, you know James May at the TESOL conferences? No, you know, I he, don't. He's always in the... Uh, in the Cal electronic village. Yeah, the electronic village. Uh, he and his team, which call themselves Circles of Innovation, have uh -huh. a, a video here about hacking, how to how to make it yourself, and how to cut out some of the thousand dollar items. Interesting to watch if you're interested in doing that. I'm not sure what Dilip has done. He's in India, but he, he's very well resourced. But he's doing stuff with uh, showing his uh, uh, whiteboard. The one thing you have to understand about the light board is that you're writing the way you normally do and it appears on the screen reverse because it's flipped. It's also a flipped learning, <laughs> it's a kind of a flip. No, but anyway, it, um, it, you write normally and, it, and the, the software flips it so that you appear to be writing. I guess it just takes you in, because I notice people tend to be left-handed when they're writing and that's because the whole thing seems to be flipped. So. Um, yeah, they're writing with the right hand, but um, but anyway, it, it flips it in such a way that you get the presenter speaking through the board. It's, it's a neat little technique. And anyway, and Lino, which is something that oh, I don't know, how do you pronounce this, uh, Graham? Lino or Lino? Lino. Um, you, you say Lino, I say Lino. Thanks. Lino, linoleum, isn't it? L linoleum L board. Lino. I know Miro, with the accent, came from obviously the Spanish artist. I was so embarrassed when they didn't tweet on that right away. But anyway, and, and Milo is something that people drink around here. But uh, <laughs> that's Milo. But anyway, oh. yeah, okay. I was curious. I was curious how Gray would, would pronounce this. You would say Lino. You mean, Mil you mean Milo? Oh, Milo is what you drink. Milo is what you drink? The chocolate drink? I have no idea. Yeah, I, I'm sorry I've confused you. <laughs> Stick to beer. Uh, anyway, for for this one, I call it Lino. I don't know what do you call it, Lane? Lino, Lino or Lino? Because from linoleum, know. which is anyway, never mind. It's ir irrelevant. So um, that's it. And then Miro, uh, it should have an accent over it. Mentimeter, which is really neat. My little Anyhow, these are some of the references. It's all on. It's all in uh, the link I gave you at the start of the chat. And I'm developing this. So in the next few days, I'll be developing it. And look forward to seeing what you guys come up with for your uh, for your session. Yeah, likewise. I'll. Um, this is very useful for my preparation. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you, Lane, for your advice. Yeah. Oh, okay. As usual. Yeah. So, well, it's taken us up right to the top of the hour, but I, I mean, Bobby isn't really looking at me in any nasty way yet. Oh, oh, oh I've just reminded her it's timber time. Things seem to be okay. It's pretty cool. I can, I can stay there five or ten. Oh, here she comes. Oh, but, oh, there we are. Okay. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. That wasn't that wasn't the threatening the pastor. No, no, no. She's, to, uh, <laughs> she's okay tonight <laughs> because we like you know we slept on a bus last night and we came home we took a nap and yeah pretty loose tonight. Yeah. Well, this has been a really nice session. I don't know if I mentioned which session it is. Let's see. This is. Where are we right now? This is, uh, uh, I always like to keep track of these things. This is um, Talent Event number 31. That's Teaching and Learning in Isolation. And Learning Together, episode number 477. Whoa, I'm not sure if I should get 500 and stop, or I don't know. Well, it's, I'll go for audience demand at that point.
I'm going to share my latest masks with you, Vance. Okay. This is also the 16th uh, <laughs> webinar, uh, Webheads Revival uh, webinar since we, Wait, we started Wait, I have to this. see him. I, he's... Oh, I see it. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Let's see, we're going to get a... Then this one as well. This is another one I picked up. Uh, <laughs> oh, my masks are so boring. I need I need to get with this mask thing. Mine look like you wear in a hospital. <laughs> okay. Graham, speak to us again because you went off speaker view. And um, went so off. these are my latest masks. I just wanted to uh, share with you. Great. Okay. This one. Excellent. You have such a collection. Are you really serious about these things? Yeah, whenever I see anything interesting with a face, uh -huh. um, so they sell them on the streets here in Mexico City, yeah. all sorts of different types of masks, decorative ones, uh -huh. plain ones, but um, I like the ones with a face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, uh, Good. So even if we missed a screenshot there, we've got it in the uh, speaker view on the recording. So all this is getting recorded up to learningtogether.net and probably tomorrow I'll have it up. Maha, any last words? I, um, welcome to unmute if you want. I like very much, I like very much the presentation. Uh, it's so interesting. I would really look forward. I uh, look forward to uh, attending it. Uh, but be patient with the Moroccans because they are not used to uh, technology that much. Uh, they uh, they need uh, to take it step by step. Maybe it's going to take longer than you expect. <laughs> well, they have an hour and a half. Uh, but I actually did a plenary in Morocco a few years ago. Uh, Gary Matram organized it. Uh, I came about five years ago, something like that. I found them to be very receptive to. Um, they are highly receptive, but the reaction takes time. Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, anyway. Uh, especially the technology. Especially the technology. Yeah, but you're doing very well there in Egypt, especially with uh, Anna Hamis and uh, the Nile uh, uh, TESOL and, and the uh, Learning Technology SIG, which is yes, doing they are doing a lot of work. Yes. <laughs> They're doing, they're doing world-class like webinars. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. I'd like to have you as well with us one day. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, was, I was doing the learning technology SIG webinars in, uh, uh, I was do, doing them in Zoom, and they stopped asking me after a while, but for a couple of months I was uh, hosting them for them. Yes, I watched them, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Because uh, at the, our teaching DSL hub, we are doing interviews, if you have uh, seen them, with different people. We are interviewing mainly today at uh, 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, so uh, we hope that we can have the chance to you and Glenn and Graham as well. Uh, that would be so exciting because uh, today it's going to be the end of the first round and uh, hopefully we are preparing another round. By, uh, hopefully. And you're recording them. Uh, sure, sure. Okay, because that's what two in the morning for me. <laughs> oh, oh, we can we can take it back, no problem. <laughs> Always oh, the okay. time that's zone the time issue. issue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Especially here yes, in Malaysia. Yes, of course, of course, we can do it much earlier. Like you do this to uh, to uh, two p.m. for us over here. I think it's about nine in your time. Uh, yes. Well, right now it's uh, one o'clock p.m. And it's coming up nice. So oh it, but that's okay. Yeah, one o'clock G, uh, GMT. I'm sorry. And two o'clock GMT, I'm quite willing to do. Uh, 2 p.m. for you is earlier. So that would be uh, something like 13, uh, one o'clock GMT. So yeah, of course, I'd be happy to. I'm available at that time without inconveniencing myself. Uh, that, Even that's my wife. Great, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, Bobby is happy, no problem. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. And Tom, any last yeah. words before we head out the door? Nice to see you again. Excuse me? Tom. Does he hear us, Tom? He's muted. I'm not sure if he's aware of that. But does he hear us? 
Hi, you waved at us. Hi, Tom. Yep, yeah. he's on Hello. There you are. Here. Yep. <laughs> um, must be a delay with Tom. I want to uh, thank you for uh, showing me these uh, tools, um, and uh, I will probably probably keep coming back. I have I have this plan I want to tell everybody about. And um oh. uh the it the, the Scottish minister recently said that Scottish Gaelic as a language is in danger. It's going to die. There's only a few people out in the mountains who actively speak it. And um Meanwhile, there are millions of us Scottish people out in the world who don't speak it basically because it's a, a, a mountain language that we don't have access to. But it's a new world with Zoom, and I think people um, should uh, make an effort, and if they care, and... Um, and use it. So um, I'm thinking of um, doing something about that because I know Zoom and I'm uh, Scottish and I want to learn that language. And uh, I mean, I'm part Scottish, like most of us uh, were out here in New Mexico, we can't speak that language. But anyway, I have this kind of vague plan that I'm working on to set up a uh, Scottish Gaelic um, uh, language learning zoom uh meeting and uh but meanwhile i've also retired and um out here in the mountains and my uh, puppy which you have noticed is very excited about a skunk and and some other things that are happening here so but anyway uh yeah life life has reached that point where um um, I might want to uh, do something with it before it's too late. So but what it, I suggest is that, you know, there's there are people who've done a lot of great work on endangered languages and uh, particularly indigenous languages, um, you know, Native American groups, for example, in the U.S. You might get dip into that literature to find out what strategies they used to keep, you know, what they did, you know, to to keep it going and you know you might look into the, some of that the um scottish council i mean they've been working on saving this language for a number of years and um uh they actually teach it in the scottish schools and oh and they they do have various uh people that are applying themselves to saving the language um i guess what i'm saying is that if you combine their effort with our Zoom expertise, okay. just yeah. the ability to harness um, the people who care worldwide who are basically just not gonna oh. get to those Western islands of Scotland anytime in their lifetime, you know, uh, uh, if, you, if you just get the people that are interested in learning it and using it, uh, that, could could do it and save the language. It's a language that has uh, a lot of worldwide interest because there's millions of us in the Scottish diaspora, and it's got. But 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 still, in practical reality, the only people that are actually using it are on these remote islands, and wow. and um, um, and and the rest of Scotland. Its biggest problem is that the Scottish people themselves kind of consider it as a mountain language or a, or a hick. They dismiss you know, it. These guys are out in the country, you know. I mean, they recognize it as part of their heritage, but they don't uh, really want to speak it because, um, well, I don't know, you know. I mean, um, I, I don't know exactly, but, but it, it's got an image problem, put it that way. So... Uh, <laughs> But that can be changed. I mean, if people are actively using it for other things, then it stays alive, right? So <clears throat> anyway, they that's probably kind of have some. They probably have some colorful proverbs that would be interesting to, oh, to learn the, about. It, it, it's you a, know, you got to have a hook, you know. 
It's a treasure trove. Yeah, that's right. You got to have a hook, right? Oh, and the music. That brings us to the that. That brings us to Vance's topic, is online language learning and teaching. That's Well, that's exactly kind of why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think Graham and I, are, or other people too, are finding, like Lane, for example, she did a oh, session okay. on SOFLA earlier. I think we're finding that these webhead sessions, they're, so, they're friendly, informal. They're just the ideal place to try out ideas. You know, if you, if you work something up and you want to have an audience and talk about it, you, know, you can just take over a web heads in action open mic thing if you want and uh, other other than that uh, learning together is going all the time not just on sundays talon is if it's it has a hook on the teaching and learning in isolation maybe it's pretty isolated out there in the orkneys but uh, in any event Hang on. there's the dog is, the dog has about had it bobby is giving me those funny looks now <laughs> Tom, Tom should um, should start teaching us Gaelic then yeah. on Sunday. Yeah, we could do that. Um, but actually, related to Scottish Gaelic dying out, um, there are some sort of good news stories. For example, Cornish, the language that is spoken in the west, the southwest of of England, was extinct, and it's now it's been revived and you know it's it's still struggling i think but i think there's a lot of evidence that you can bring languages back to to life especially by drawing attention to them and um encouraging them um as was done by cornish okay shall we say on that note and take it up again uh, next week we'll be back again for the uh, a week from today, same time, noon GMT. Anybody's welcome. It's all open mic in theory. And I actually have nothing, no idea for a topic to, uh, pressing to talk about. So um, anybody's welcome. Maybe to, we can, mm -hmm. Vance, maybe we can work, we can discuss how your workshop went and what mm. you, lessons learned from doing it and what you would do differently, etc. That's one thing we could do. That would be on the 19th, and you'll have one coming up five days later. So, of course, exactly. you know, we can, we can well, talk I've about that. A, you'll have the blog post. Of interest in, in doing that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and Lane will be happy to come in and give us advice from the from above, from the Uber. Okay, I'll, I'll, tr I'll mm -hmm. try. We're, we're celebrating my daughter's birthday, but ah, that day. Ah, so. okay. And it's... A, online thing so oh okay yeah all right well so, no obligations no one's obligated okay mm -hmm. yeah. invite your daughter along lane to join us for a birthday <laughs> <laughs> she's not interested in mom's profession <laughs> yeah, put she's best a corporate mask. attorney <laughs> no not another one her a happy birthday <laughs> nice mask yeah. i love it i love you you're so you have such a sense of humor, you know, you get, you get so serious and then all of a sudden you get so silly. I love it. <laughs> you get serious? Oh, well, anyway, okay. Uh, it seems that you, are, you have a great collection nowadays. <laughs> That's a hippo, right? A hippo. Is that a hippo? Um, I think this is a pig. Uh, oh, a pig. <laughs> and what does it say on the t-shirt or on the jumper? The, um... The t shirts for any Spanish speakers. Sometiendo. Montiendo? I can't read that. I don't part. understand. It's no entiendo. No entiendo. Oh, okay. I understand. Your name yeah, is written over. At first, it. I yeah. thought it was Nintendo, but well, uh, that's it. I read it. It's now, that's, see, that's Nintendo. interesting to me that what we did was we looked at the beginning and the end of the word, and that's what the research shows. that People will take, take a word and they go to the ends of it. Even if the middle is disruptive to their thinking, mm. it doesn't interfere. You see Nintendo. Mm. Yeah, well, it's it's a Nintendo logo. So typically you... That also, yeah. The, ah. the logo, yeah. As a logo, but it's a oh, play on word. Nintendo. So ah, see. Wow, Nintendo. that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm wearing a T-shirt I got in an Irish bar in okay. Chicago <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> when I ordered my favorite beer, which is um, 
Smithwicks. Hmm. Oh, Smithwicks. I don't know it. I love it. It's my favorite. Mm. I'm not a beer person, but every now and then there's a beer that gets me. Hmm. <laughs> well, this is my T-shirt comes from Nepal. So. <laughs> um. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to say good night and thank you very okay. much for coming and gracing us with your wonderful ideas and your presence. And it's nice to see all of you. And okay. Nice to see you. See you and again. if you're interested in, in flip learning, we're having our conference the next oh, yeah. few days. I put I put all the links in the chat. It, I'm doing two. I'm doing two. Those Mine links on will Wednesday. go in the My, blog post and also in learningtogether.net. I learned yeah. together. I, my myself. live, maybe I should post my live. My live sessions are going to be on Wednesday. Yes, do. Um, right. But, but they're, the they presume that you've done the pre work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, put all that, uh, however, you're going to, you have to communicate that to us somehow. I know, I forgot. I, I'm i not good <laughs> at like marketing stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll look okay. for it. We'll look for it. We all have right. the basic information, or I can always write you and ask you. Okay. 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 All right. Well, nice to see everybody. And uh, first of all, I'm going to attack the, uh, the, the live stream. I'm stopping the live stream now. It has to be done in a certain order, I suppose. It must be stopping. Kip Bowen was here. I should have mentioned it. Kip Bowen was here. Uh, he left messages in the live stream. And uh, he's actually been here every now and then. It's kind of nice. Do you know Kip Bowen? Second life name? Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. been around for quite a while. Okay, stopping the Zoom recording and good night to all. There you go.